Flight Test. I'm Josh and this is Josh. Hi. And today we have the next member of our swappable family. Swappable. Is it swappable? This is a newbie for us. This is a new, this is new ground. We're doing new stuff. It's not swappable. Oh. I know, this is crazy. Do you remember back when we uh, we talked about how we brought the FT Silpo Firewall out and we said that this is not only gonna be for the Versa, but it's gonna be for future planes? Yeah. This was actually the plane that was designed around. So we're breaking new ground. It, it's it's a new thing for flight tests. No more swappables, but it's still super easy and fun to fly. And also, it goes back to one of our very first scratch builds. Do you remember that? That was no. a nice flashback. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> no, I don't remember. You don't remember. You don't remember a certain F-22? It was one of the very first planes you had success flying from beginning to end. I'm blacking out. You're blacking out? It looks just like this, only not. Was it swappable? No, it wasn't swappable. You really hung up on the swappable thing, huh? I'm sad. Here's the thing, we listen to you guys. A lot of viewers are saying, you know what, the swappable thing is cool, but break away from it. We're sick of swappables. We don't want everything to be a swappable. And I love prop and slot, and we haven't done any of that. And as a matter of fact, this is the first collaboration between Chad and I. And uh, Chad had the original design of this. And as a matter of fact, you have it right here, don't you, Chad? Yes, I do. Why don't you come in here? Were you checking your phone? I was taking a picture of the set. So this is the, well, I don't want to say the original, because the original original was it's ugly. Well, basic. This, this design has been, been probably years and years. There's probably right. 20 or 30 amazing different designs of the F-22. It's awesome. But this is the first one that we cut out to do testing and make changes. So you can see like uh, some of the notes were put the push rods on top, uh, you know, build up three layers of foam there. Yeah. Um, change the angle for the bow tie. But anyhow, yeah. Josh improved upon it and ended up coming up with uh, a much, sorry, let me get it out of the way there. That's okay, and actually, Chad's flew amazing. It was awesome. We, If you go to our Vine account, we were actually roof sliding with it. Yeah. We took it out on the main, we were having so much fun. We were actually shooting it off the roof and hitting the roof and skipping off. It was fantastic. It was, it was a great, great plane. But we've learned a lot since then. We've, yes. We've evolved and I, a lot. I love what you did here. Um, it was Josh's idea to enclose that and give it the little uh, front scoops. And, and also, we learned a lot with the different like the cruisers and the different models and stuff we we, we found a way you can uh, you work with the foam to give it more of a full body and mm -hmm. also it's about the same materials as three layers of foam in the front yeah the weight barely changed uh, but it definitely has more dimension to it and it's a little more structure yet it's still keeping a very simple build and this is a great thing if you're a father and son you can take an evening you can scratch build this there's always gonna be free plans there's gonna be a free build video mm -hmm. and of course if you see what's over there Oh yeah. We're gonna have it available as a speed build kit. Uh, right. We desperately want you guys to get in the hobby. We want you guys to make a memory. And also the neat thing about this is it builds so quickly and so easily. Whether you're scratch building or buying a kit, you're in good shape. Great. Um, but one also new technique that we use, and this is why this little piece of foam there is, this nose is not poster board. Yeah. It's, it's a hard. lot it's, more durable. It's crazy, crazy durable and rigid. Mm -hmm. And the way we did that, it's just a simple new technique. And guys, if you're out there scratch building, I wanna show you the separate from the design. Peeling off one layer of foam, gives you an awesome amount of bend. It won't actually cause a crinkling and That's not even... A nice smooth bend. A really smooth so, bend. And yep. you do it on the bottom? Yep, yeah. it's on the bottom and the well, top. There's a little mud there, a so little apparently that one's been full. We, we drew that on. We drew that, Did you? yeah. It just added effect. Some and distress marks. If you look down on the inside, you can see there's a nice big cavity and plenty of area for you to put your battery and your equipment. And also, like we were talking about, Chad, that belly pan, we actually just put a little piece of tape there, so that's removable. Mm -hmm. And all your electronics, everything exposed is underneath here or in your cockpit. So you don't have any of the wires and the ugliness uh, showing. And, and Chad, you did a really great job with the way you recess the servos. We've never done that before. So normally we have the servos on the outside, but it's a really smooth transition. Well, I wanted to keep it clean. And, and one of the things that you saw on the other one, it was yeah. a, a top mount servo or the push rod because I wanted a, a positive on the pull. Yes. So when you pull up, you have the most strength. But Josh did this really ingenious idea awesome. where he notched out the foam and it actually has a little channel for the push rod so you have oh, nice. you have zero flex in that well, push rod so and, great and what, job thank you and what you what chad's talking about and also if you guys ever want to design we want to encourage you guys to take stabs in design anytime that you're pushing the positive which means you're pushing the, the push rod and you're pushing that elevator up if you have any kind of rod flex it's going to soften it mm -hmm. up you'd much rather have it be soft on the negative than on the positive because if you're diving towards the ground and you have a lot of speed and you try to pull up you don't want it to be mushy and soft. It's right. mushy and yep. it just spikes into the ground. You have a dirt nap and you get And I learned that on a little one that I made. I made a tiny little one and yeah. it flew great until you pulled any high G's and you tried to pull up and it, it, I had the servo on the bottom and it flexed and went down. We built a lot of them mm -hmm. and it was kind of funny because we get them flying really, really fast and then we go to do something and 
not yeah. gonna happen. So it's always good to have as little flex in your push rods as possible, um, whether you're reinforcing them or whether you're putting guides for them. And did you talk about the bow tie and, and how that um, helps? Basically the reason for the bow tie is right where the tip is, is where you're gonna have that clap. You're gonna have that pocket of air just snapping against it. When you open up that area around there, it's gonna quiet it down a little bit mm -hmm. and get a little bit more efficiency. Um, the prop and slots are not the most efficient, pushers are not the most efficient, but this will quiet it down and help you just a little bit with the noise. Right. Um, also, with the FT Elements, we also wanted to design this for the small uh, small motor mount or the mm -hmm. small motor configuration for indoor flying, but you can also go to the bigger motor. So whether you're flying like the Spitfires or you're flying the three packs, you can fly this and have a great experience. And I like how this is, so depending on the, on the length of your motor, you yeah. can actually mount this wherever needed to center your prop in the slot there. So exactly. I really like that. Well, thanks. Okay, so I'm, I'm ready to fly. You, you ready guys to fly? go out and fly? I'm gonna fly the one with the small motor. Now, wait a minute, these are available now in the store now, right? Yeah. Yep. We also have some new decals that will match the uh, color scheme. And this was well. per your request too. A lot of people were asking for decals and the hardest thing was to have these made locally. It was just, it was cost prohibitive. And so people understand, yeah, here, here's, here's one that was broken up. So these are actual decals. They don't have a background. So on this one, Alex actually broke it up. And this isn't a blue decal, it's a white decal with just yes. a blue back mask. Um, so what you do is you pull this off and lay it down and then pull it off again. It's a again very high quality leaks. die cut. Yeah. Um, it's beautiful. And, and the, the hardest thing we had is a lot of people were asking for logos and, and ways mm -hmm. to, to decorate their airplanes. We had a hard time color matching, but also the volume we, we had to order to, to order it locally, it was just, it would be too Well, expensive. yeah, they, they were, we had to order a lot of volume yeah. to get them affordably. But after enough of you guys asked for them, we thought this would be a great time for that. Yep. So these are now officially on the store. And also the kits are available on the store and the first 250, since frankly, this is a very simple design, are going to get our new small decal with it too. Just like three. we used to do with the three packs. Yep. Nice. Three small little guy there. All okay, right. So well, I'm, I'm going to go fly. No, put the you sails guys yourself? All right, let's go fly. Okay. All right, you know, this is kind of a different angle that we've ever shot in before, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, this is a little bit different part of the yeah. property I here. Think, didn't we rescue you right there? I was rescued from you. <laughs> yeah, and in record time. It was amazing. It was like another government solution. Bad joke. Yeah. Huh? yeah you know, was. you're the first person to, to bring this design, so why don't you go ahead and pop it in the you air? You want first? me to fly? Yeah, yeah go ahead okay. and fly. So, no. <laughs> Now Chad's flying with the bigger motor pack, so this is going to be great for strafing, for having some fun. You're probably not going to want to fly indoors with it, to tell you the truth, because it's pretty fast. Uh, also, if you want to do high alpha, things like that, go with the Blue Wonder or the smaller motor pack. This is also equivalent to the 24 gram Hextronic as well, too. So, uh, what do you say we throw this one in the air? Yeah, go for it. What do you think, Chad? I love it. These like things it. handle so well. I love the way these things handle. I would say this particular setup isn't the fastest, but it's got plenty of power. So do you mind if I ask you a question? Yeah. Why do an F-22 when it's not really a jet to begin with, and <laughs> it's not quite as fast as a jet would be either? Well, does it look cool? It does look cool. It does look cool. The ultimate goal, you're your father, your son, you want something that looks epic, but is easy to fly and easily approachable. Yeah. It's the F-22, man. All right. Crazy maneuverable. Yeah, this control surfaces are that huge. Yeah. Well, and the nice thing is you can really, you know, different motors, different power plants, different configurations on CG is going to make it feel different. Matter of fact, though, we got a lot of other people here. Guys, why don't you float, throw yours in the air? And Josh, All I'm right. going to hand you yours. Okay. You're the one with the wrist right. There you go. Got it. So we're going to have how many? Five of these in the air? Oh, yeah, you don't want to fly alone. <laughs> With the Blue Wonder on a windy day, it's not the most user friendly, but or uh, doesn't penetrate the best. We don't have much wind today, though. But we're pretty fortunate without much wind. The other great thing is when, since you have a prop and slot configuration, you can do things like streamer cutting, you can do combat, and your prop is really well protected. Nice. Now, I'd strongly recommend if you're gonna fly, don't go ahead and launch it by the fuselage or top launch it, because it's a big prop that takes up to a 947. You don't want to cut your hand, wingtip launch it. If you're wondering how to do that, we have a great video, we'll link it below, showing you how to do wingtip launch it. Okay. No one's crashed yet. This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the noise of all of them together it sounds like a B-17 or something. It's mistuned engines. And they do look really cool. The though. wind's picking up a little bit. Josh, what do you think? Is it easy to fly? Yeah. Yeah, it's great. You can dial. I was, I was really scared of the control surfaces, how much throw they have and uh, how big they are, but that's yeah, not too bad. You can dial it way down and have a really easy flight. Um, or you can just dial your x up so it's really smooth. Oh, is that you, Alex? Right. Okay, here, I'm gonna fly slow. Whoa, I heard somebody go down. Oh, someone put it in a tree. <laughs> Who was it? Oh, that was that's Mr. a nice Shavata. ornament. 
<laughs> the belly pin is just sitting there. <laughs> you are fast, Alex. I don't know. Which motor do you have? Uh, same one as you, I think. But I have uh, a lot more weight. Yeah, you have the Mobius on yours, don't you? Yeah, I have the camera. What do you think? Do you think we do FPV with this? Possibly, yeah, I think so. It handles the weight fine. It actually penetrates a little bit better. A little bit more speed, the heavier you go, right? I'm gonna come in for a low pass, see if we can get it on camera. Nice. Uh, guys, our sincere hope this design has been done so many different times and so many great designers and uh, RC Groups has a ton of them. There's a whole thread on F22s. This is simply our take on it. We're not trying to take credit for designing an F22. Uh, a lot of amazing people have made this design possible. We just wanted to put a little spin on it, make it look a little bit more scale and also accept different power from it. Still trying to get out of that tree, Mr. Zavada. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, <laughs> it's like, I'm hungry. <laughs> You're doing a great job. Where are you, brother? So, I landed. I'm, I'm a, oh, there you are. Did we wrap thought, up? Yeah, I thought we should close the show. Okay, oh, we got another yeah. one. Plinko time. Plinko. <laughs> I think batteries <laughs> are dying. <laughs> is it the same tree, isn't it? I don't know. Wait, where's it at? Alex is a, like twice as high. See if we can go oh, to the tail feathers there? <laughs> oh, man, that was awesome. All right, we should probably wrap up. The batteries are dying, <laughs> okay. trees are getting hit, planes are dying. <laughs> this is a lot of dying. fun. Great design, you guys. Yeah, oh, it was really fun. cool. Yeah, good job, Chad. <laughs> well, thank you. You did most of the work, I think. No, no, no. This is great. And uh, guys, please, by all means, uh, build these things, post videos of you flying. Um, you know, there's a great flight test thing called flightfest.com, right? That's right. It's a website. It's called a. It's a website. And, and you can go to the store on the website and pick these up. We have new decals that match the uh, color scheme and everything. So go check it out. Flightfest.com. And a matter of fact, if, if you have a mod, make an article out of it. If you have a build where you want to share your build experience, put it in the forum side. That way people can either rate it or experience it. And another one just went down. That was a nice landing. All right, that guys, was a landing. landing. You guys are official sponsors. Thank you so much for making yeah, this thank possible you. for us. All right, we'll see you guys see next, next time. time. Yeah.